as well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. When peace. Then 
we continue as we invite the National Association of Admin Professionals to do their selection. This will be followed by an instrumental by Inoite Inanga. Good afternoon, church. This tribute was combined by members of the National Association of Administrative Professionals, NAP, and dedicated to the memory of a true champion, a saint who has entered heavenly glory. Whether it was dawn in the morning or praise on the Pulse Radio program, she was an inspiration to many. She touched lives. She was a much sought after master of ceremonies. Her upbeat spirit and her witty jokes made everyone laugh. Who did not notice that she loved the scarves? She had them in an array of colors, style, and textures. She also loved brooches, but especially the exquisite ones. Dawn was well respected and loved by her peers. She was loved for her radiant smile, her laughter, her practical way of approaching any topic, and her musical talent. She sang a lovely alto and was a great guitar player. She was an avid music lover, but she especially loved the saxophone. Her bread pudding was only what Dawn can do. They were tasty and mouth-watering. She was an incredible person, always remembering others. Oh, how we long to hear her voice again and remember the wonderful times we shared. She was a source of wisdom and inspiration to others within her reach. She promoted excellence to its fullest. Earth has lost a beautiful gem, but heaven has gained an angel. Thank you.
Thank you very much. This time, we'll invite the New Birth Gospel Tabernacle to do their tribute. This will be followed by the BHS class of 82. Good afternoon, church. Sister Dawn Mills was an extraordinary person with an extraordinary gift or talent. Whenever she entered the room, you know that she was there. Her contribution, her commitment is beyond measure. She was reliable, committed, and she had an ear and also an attitude of excellence. We want to say thanks to her and also to the family for giving us such a wonderful gift. I am here because she was not just only a very important part of the Newburgh Gospel Tabernacle for many years, but she was an asset to the body of Christ. Whenever you needed a musician, she didn't ask you if you were Baptist, Pentecostal, or whatever. Dawn was available. I can recall the last time, I don't know if, who invited her. I think she just heard that we were having our gospel Calypso, um, because Dawn loved Calypso. And I think that's one of the areas that we communicated on. And Dawn came over, I don't know if she was prepared or she heard about it, and Dawn did a calypso for us. And we appreciate her talent, her ability. I can say, if I can just think about it, heaven is a happier place because Dawn is there. I remember she said, you know, I, um, I'm going to get a, a, what a grandchild up in heaven. She was doing that one. And, uh, you know, we just laughed about it. Uh, you know, I, and I said, don't know, we're going to have a grand time. She said, oh, I thought it was grandchild um, <laughs> up in heaven. And so we, on the behalf of the entire leadership of the church, the members, partners, we want to say thank you Thank you so much, especially to her mom and the rest of the family. Thanks. Thank you, Don, for giving to the Lord. Amen.
tribute for the service of thanksgiving begins we now call on the worship night team to share their tribute with us
brothers and sisters. We know that each month Dawn organized what she called a night of worship. And so we are the group who sang, who backed up each night. And so we want to extend our deepest condolences to the family of Dawn. May God continue to provide strength in your time of mourning.
spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your
Shall we stand, please? Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this reason is Christ become the Lord of the dead and the living. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. Hallelujah.
my heart shall sing when I pause to remember a heartache here is but a stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward this troubled world is not my final home for until then my heart shall go on singing and until then with joy I will carry on for until the day mine eyes behold the city until that day God calls us all home eternal God to you be glory and honor to you God be majesty might dominion and power for indeed you are God the creator you are God the sustainer of all things and scripture reminds God that you sustain all things by the power of your word and today God we understand that while we grieve we are to do so not like those who have no hope but rather like those who until then our hearts will continue to rejoice that in you God we put our trust and in you God we put our entire faith and so God we are looking forward to that day when all God's children will gather over yonder and we shall sing with the angels hallelujah hallelujah to him who is and was and to him who will always be and so God we come thankful today yes it is occasion for which we might be sudden but yet we are joyful for joyful is the death of God's saints and so we rejoice knowing that absent from this body is only to be present with you. And so God, we come today as a memorial, as a testimony to the life's work of Sister Dawn. And we pray even now, Holy God, that for everything that will be done today, for everything that will be said, May our hearts reminisce about the times, the good times that we would have shared. And at the end of it, God, may we say, thank you, Lord. And for those who do not know your Savior, let it be today that they, God, make that calling and that election show. For we pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen.
seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll continue. We'll now invite Donna Joy at Mills Ward to read our first scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 49 to 58. This will be followed by the tributes from Novella Springett, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, and the musical selection by Blessed. Good afternoon. Scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 49 to 58. And as you have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is in sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Good day, everyone. We are here to celebrate the memory and honor and venerate Dawn Patricia Mills. I hope that my tribute can do justice to who Dawn really was in all of our lives. We first met in sixth form, class of 1982 to 1984, and we became friends then. I remember Dawn took me to her home and I was a poor girl from Molyneux. I had never seen anyone live like that with gardeners and a lawn and fruit trees. And she never said to me, do you know who I am? You know, do you know who my father is? She just treated me like I was somebody and really touched me. And we worked, we went on to do so much together. We worked together at Eastern Caribbean Central Band she was part of Mary Powell and the Ready or Not Gospel Band. She would travel with us, she'd perform with us, and she also would attend Deep Bay Church with us. One of my fondest memories of Dawn is one Sunday before we had kids, we were driving to church, and I would pick up, and I'm singing along to whatever is on the radio, and I said to her, how does that sound? And she said, well, it must be the key of K, because that key is not on the keyboard. <laughs> 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 when I was leaving St. Kitts, I was so shocked many years later, and I saw it in the picture. I left the bass guitar that she used to play for Mary Powell and the Ready or Not Gospel Band with her, and she still played it. She took care of it. She, she valued it. She was godmother to my children. She was their first music teacher. And I've always told her she should take credit for the academic excellence because music fires up the brain. It's, and she was the one who inculcated that in them. She loved on them. The last time Makeda was here, my first daughter, she picked up from the airport. She got her something to eat. And she never told me no. I would tell her all my grand plans and she would come along if she could. I have one regret, I was here in February and I always made plans with Dawn in mind. I knew we were coming in July to have the concert and I was up at Church of God of Prophecy Buckley's and Sunday morning and I told her I have to rush, I'm catching the plane at three. She told me, come on down and see me. And I said, I'm gonna see you in July. Remember you're playing with us. I didn't know then that I would not see her. <laughs> What I want to most remember, us to all remember about Dawn, is that she lived her life for Christ. 
We said, we would say when you play basketball, we're defending the key. Come hard or don't come at all. And she lived like that. She lived all out for God. She lived a life of excellence. In the words of the Apostle Paul, Paul could, she could say, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Henceforth is later for me a crown of righteousness. I am touched because I know we have a hope beyond the grave. <laughs> and I'm going to rise again. Ain't no power on earth can hold us down. I'm going to meet God again. We're going to be around the throne and say, Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. Don Patricia Mills was my friend. Just before Coral sings, a brief word from me. On behalf of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank family, we extend our heartfelt condolences to Dawn's mother, her brother, her sisters and sisters in Christ, her close friends, her many, many relatives. We also extend our condolences to Pastor Connor and the Church of Church family at Antioch Baptist Church. May all God comfort all of us at this difficult time. You know, our hearts are heavy, and at the same time, we're grateful. If you could understand that. Dawn served with us at ECCB in two stints for 22 and a half years. She was liked. She was well respected. She was loved. And so we feel her passing deeply and we miss her dearly. But as people of faith, we have a hope beyond this life. Amen. And we hang on to that hope this afternoon. Amen. You know, someone once said that the two most important days in a person's life is the day he or she is born and the day he or she discovers why he or she was born. Don discovered why she was born. She understood her purpose, and she pursued her purpose with relentless passion and excellence. And that's why we celebrate that life today, because it was a life well lived. And we know what we do for Jesus Christ is not in vain. I will end as I did two weeks ago by reflecting on the thought from Corey Ten Boom, a Holocaust survivor who herself became a mighty woman of faith when she said, the measure of a life, after all, is not its duration, but its donation. Whatever we feel about how long or how short Dawn, Dawn lived, we can all agree she lived a full and rich life, and we are better and richer for having met her. 
but she impacted so many of us along the way. Even as we look at the slides, she brings smiles to our faces. We recall her intellect and her wit and her humor. Those are the memories on which we will draw as we remember Dawn, our colleague and friend. And so I conclude by thanking God for her life. May her memory be a perpetual blessing to all. God bless you all.
Till he returns or calls me home. Here in the death of Christ I stand. Amen. This time, we'll invite Karen Hughes to share the formal remembrance with us. Good afternoon, everyone. When I thought about how I would want to reflect on and remember Dawn today, I felt overwhelmed by the, the enormity of the task. How to reduce all the magnetism and the passion and the tour de force that was Dawn Mills and collapse it into a single moment in time. And I had to arrive at the inevitable conclusion that it was impossible. And therefore, I crave your understanding as I seek merely to just share little glimpses of the persona that we knew as Dawn Patricia Mills. When I reflected on my friend, what I knew about her, and all that I had learned and I'm still discovering about her, the word that came to me was wow. And I wanted us to remember wow because Dawn was witty, she was outstanding, and she was a worshiper. Dawn saw herself as a Caribbean woman. She did so since she hailed from both Nevision stock her father being the late, great Suswin Mills of Government Road, Charlestown, Nevis, and from Antiguan roots in the person of her mother, Glenda Carr Mills, originally of Antigua. The couple would have met in Antigua in the early 1960s when Suswin Sr. attended teacher's training college there. Both Suswin and Glenda were dedicated and indefatigable members of the Gospel Hall Church movement. And this would have afforded the opportunity for them to meet at the Shiloh Gospel Hall in Antigua. In 1964, the couple tied the knot at Olivet Gospel Hall in St. Kitts. And on the 24th of July, 1965, Dawn burst forth on the scene as the first of her parents' five children. Dawn was born, however, with a heart condition, which meant that she was somewhat delicate in the beginning and that she did not receive the mandatory allotment of licks for punishment. While she might have had this perceived physical limitation, this in no way hampered Dawn's mental development, nor her irrepressibly outgoing nature. She was in no way a shrinking violet. There was nothing delicate or frail about Dawn's mouth. She was outspoken and fearless, and when she spoke, it revealed that she had grit and determination and a will of iron. As the eldest sister to Glenson, Victor, Joy, and Suswin Jr., she learned to hold court early and to hone her skills of direction and delegation. Even though Mother Mills maintains that she had never given anybody permission to beat anybody else during her absence, nevertheless, Dawn's siblings can recall that from time to time, Dawn would share out some licks of her own in the absence of her parents. You see, I believe most of us know that Dawn was an authoritative figure. She knew what she wanted. She had a great respect for discipline and she had no fear of taking charge. When I asked her family if Dawn would easily take the wrong within family squabbles, they looked at me as if I were insane take the wrong, Dawn would not easily go down without a fight. This internal fortitude 
would have stood her in good stead when the family had to bear up first under the untimely death of Dawn's brother Glenson in 1972 at the tender age of six and much later the loss of Victor in 2017. Dawn's deep and abiding love for her family never wavered, even though at times it was stormy. As her brother Suswin Jr. said, you had to be tough in our household because all of us were stubborn. Dawn cared for, loved, and sacrificed for her family. Her siblings knew that she had little tolerance for nonsense, but they also knew that she was generous to a fault and loyal. You could count on Dawn. She was like a second mother and mentor to her nephew, Vikran, and lavished attention on Asa, Joshua, and Solace. Growing up in the Mills household, Dawn would have been nurtured in an atmosphere where church, academic excellence, and musical talent were strongly encouraged. Sussman Jr. recalls that if Olivet Gospel Hall was open, the family had to be there. Dawn had a pet peeve about church, though. She couldn't stand to be late. Does that sound familiar? When Dawn realized that waiting on her mother would almost inevitably mean she would be late, she determined that she would leave earlier with her father because he was the church organist and had to be there earlier. It was at Olivet that Dawn would give her heart to Jesus Christ. It was at Olivet that Dawn would have had deeply inculcated in her a love for God, a love for church, and a love for fellowship. Dawn's intelligence surfaced very early, as she was a well-rounded, active, and brilliant student, silver medalist in National Spelling Bee, nine O-levels with seven distinctions, well-versed in French and Spanish, and an active member of the famous Bastia High School Debating Society. She would later go on to pursue further studies at the renowned Howard University in Washington, D.C., where she distinguished herself by placing first in the class of finance, graduating magna cum laude with a bachelor's degree in business administration. Prior to embarking on her tertiary education, however, Dawn would have worked at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank for several years, as you would have heard. Upon completion of her studies, Dawn would have returned to continue her employment at the bank and did so until the year 2000, when she ventured onto other pursuits before she returned once again in 2019 to that institution. These were unforgettable years for Dawn. Dawn's reputation at the bank was a sterling one, honed sharply by her consistent commitment to excellence, professionalism, and her wholehearted engagement in the bank's formal and informal activities. It was at the ECCB that Dawn would launch her classic stage name of Lord Ajokin. Following up her upon her time at the bank, Dawn would embark on a number of freelance endeavors serving in the legal, education, retail, and media sectors. Within that time, radio broadcasting became one of her greatest passions. Her fame as a radio host or announcer spread throughout the Federation and beyond through her hosting of such programs as WinFM's Dawn in the Morning and ZZZ's very popular Praise on the Pulse. Dawn was a food aficionado. She waxed poetic about her cooking, and eating. And anyone who knew Dawn would have known <laughs> that she felt that pork in all its varied forms was a heavenly adventure. <laughs> it was not wise for you to get between Dawn and her ham. She excelled at various dishes, but I recall with fondness her spinach rice, her drunken bread pudding, Lord help us. <laughs> 
and Diane still speaks of her famous scrambled eggs. Her sister Joy also fondly remembers how skilled she was at making chocolate fudge. Between 2019 and 2018, sorry, 2009 and 2018, Dawn invested her time and energy in the field of education. She enjoyed several stints as an instructor with the National Skills Training Program, instructing in various subject areas, including information technology and entrepreneurship. Shortly before returning to the ECCB in 2019, Dawn was employed as a teacher of music at her alma mater, Bastia High School. Even before that, she had started a fund to buy a piano for the Bastia High School. And you are invited to contribute to that fund as it is still active. As a facilitator, Dawn was always punctual, well prepared, and organized. In her own peculiar Dawn style, she was engaging, creative, humorous. And as a result, she bonded with trainees and teaching staff alike. Some of those friendships would extend well beyond her time as a facilitator. This was part of the Dawn persona. I don't quite know how to wrap my mind around the depth and extent of Dawn's friendships. If she claimed you as a friend, and she had many, you became part of this incredible fellowship of the ring. Whether it was on the inner or outer circle, you would be blessed by her extraordinary generosity, her unbending loyalty, and a love that was so profoundly moving. You have already heard some of that today, or seen it in the booklet, but Dawn's friends were intricately woven in the fabric of her life. Some of the names we are familiar with, Jean Thomas, Novella, Noreen, Brenda Caesar, Velma, June James, Lynette, and of course, Diane. It's as if Dawn had this inner fountain and she would continuously be pouring forth into the lives of her loved ones. Time, gifts, cards, calls, coordinating and hosting events for them. If you were Dawn's friend, you had to feel the love. And for the children of her friends, she gladly took on the role of godmother to many. She was so proud of her goddaughter Davida and frequently boasted of her exploits. To several others, she was Auntie Dawn, Dylan, and Divine, Gianni, and Maya. They were all so blessed to be included in this bounty of her love. I don't, did not even personally know some of Dawn's family and friends, but then again, I knew them because she spoke so freakly, frequently about them. She was always doing something for them. It was Dawn who helped Diane through some of the darkest periods of her life. It was Dawn who befriended Lynette through thick and thin. Her exploits with her scrabble buddies, her dear friends from the banking community. We could be here into next week if I had to fully explore all the intricacies of Dawn's connections. For myself, I'm not even sure, I don't even know when exactly I came into Dawn's circle. But we had a mutual love for words, the word of God, and for jokes and witticisms. There were many times I would meet Dawn, and I would say, Dawn, you're behaving? She said, yes, I'm behaving, but it's how? <laughs> I can recall that somehow she discovered that I had a weakness for fish head. Would you believe that one Sunday I was summoned to her home after church where she had prepared for me a giant fish head that she had seasoned and broiled and baked to perfection. I felt so special. But you see, this was Dawn. She would wait for you. She would pick you up, drop you off, 
visit you when you were sick, cheer you up when you were down, make you laugh until you cried, bring groceries for you, cook for you, shop for you, babysit, cajole, and give advice, solicited or unsolicited. She really was dawn 24-7, a friend and a woman for all seasons. Dawn's wit was legendary. Many have described it as being rapier-like in nature. The rapier was a, a, a sword. It was slender. It was sharp. It was pointed. And that is how Dawn was. She was quick of brain, swift of tongue. And even if her words were sharp, she often made you laugh in the process, so you didn't really feel it. As a master of ceremonies, she was unique, elegant, classy, and wickedly funny. It was no wonder that she was highly sought after and such a popular choice for gala events, dinners, weddings, parties. Dawn was just a born entertainer. To my mind, Dawn was a national treasure, a public figure in her own right. But like most public figures, she had her own private struggles. There were times when she would become so ill or where those struggles would bring her to the brink of discouragement. And in some of those moments, that is where I believe the wow of dawn would begin to shine at its brightest. Because in the midst of ongoing discomfort and pain, she would cast off the cloak of infirmity and she would become whatever was needed for the occasion. Lord a joking, ex tempo Calypsonian, talented musician, radio personality, or master of ceremonies extraordinaire. I believe in those moments that Dawn became who she was created to be. She made us laugh and smile and lifted our hearts with her music. As Minister Henny from Newbirth said, Dawn never hid her giftings, but instead emptied herself of all her God-given talents. And I believe that all of us are somehow more deeply enriched by her giving. From the time that Dawn committed her heart to the Lord in 1976, it was as if there was no turning back. She not only cut her baby teeth on church, but she was in church up to her eyeballs. Olivet Gospel Hall, All Nations Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., Mount Carmel Baptist Church, New Birth Gospel Tabernacle, Destin Ministries, and finally here at Antioch Baptist Church. Dawn was never just a bench warmer. She had to do. She had to give rise to those talents that were forever pushing her forward and pushing her upward. She was born to serve. She would play in many, many different capacities. Indeed, Dawn said herself that after God, her number one love was music and the love of fear was evident. From her early days at the feet of Miss Evelyn Crawford, on through Miss Maureen Pennyfeather, Geary Knight, and Pamela Wall, she would consistently demonstrate that she was devoted to the craft, and more importantly, that she was committed to the worship of the living God. And it was her combined devotion to both God and music that would lead her to start the memorable choir of Asaph in 2003. This was a combined choir with, with members drawn from several churches. Former choir members would recall that Dawn was formidable as a choir director. She would drive you until you produced the note that she wanted. She cut no corners and she had no friends when she was directing that choir. It was all about application, work, and excellence. Music first, liming after. Dawn played the piano, organ, guitar, taught herself to play the bass guitar, and even had several stints on some of the blowing instruments. She performed in secular and gospel bands at home and abroad, and accompanied choirs, soloists, etc., for every type of event imaginable. 
Dawn even established her own music school, the Allegro Music Academy to instruct in piano and later in voice. The worship team that she led at Antioch recalls her being both a challenge to rise to and yet an incredible blessing. Because Dawn was so experienced and so grounded and so knowledgeable in the theory of worship music that the team benefited greatly as she led them to strive for excellence in alignment with the vision of Antioch Baptist Church. And for anyone who came under Dawn's tutelage, those wrong notes and off keys would often be met with those unforgettable facial expressions. But the fact is that Dawn knew the secret. She was not only a musician par excellence, but within her own self, she was a true worshiper. She knew what it was to enter the secret place and to commune with God. Dawn knew that her walk and the walk with Jesus Christ was not a religion. It was a relationship. And therefore, while we miss her so much now, we know we are confident that she has stepped onto a different stage to enter a loftier audience. Rest on, Dawn. Rest on. Thank you very much, Karen. Let me take this opportunity to express to Dawn's family, in particular her mother, Sister Mills, her profound sympathy, and to her brother and sister and other members of the extended family and her close friends and relatives. Let me, on behalf of the family, thank you for coming to share with them in this dear time of bereavement, we acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Timothy Harris, and Minister Wendy Phipps. We also acknowledge the Governor of the Central Bank, Sir Timothy Antwine, Don would say J. Make sure you say J. Passed on that invitation, you need to redo it. It's J. To all the pastors, I see Pastor Cyprian Williams and his wife and members of the New Birth Gospel Tabernacle, permanent secretaries, including Mr. Vincent Hodge, and so many of you cross-section who've come. It demonstrates your love and the impact that Dawn has had on your life. As we continue, we are going to sing an offertory medley of choruses at this time. Thank you.
Let's pray. Almighty God, sustainer and Apollo of the universe, thank you for these gifts, the givers of these gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, please. A second reading comes to us from Daniel chapter number 4, verses 2 to 3, and Daniel chapter number 2, verses 19 to 23. And this represents uh, uh, Sister Dawn's uh, favorite uh, passage speaking of the sovereignty of God. And it will be read by Ezra Lollipop Quilly. This will be followed by a tribute by David Brown. Good afternoon, church. Daniel chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Daniel chapter 2, 19 to 23. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought towards me. How great are his signs, how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Then is the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for his wisdom and might are his. He changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and seated upon kings, and sorry, and set it up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know the understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth in him. I thank thee and praise thee, O God, of my fathers, who has given my wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. This is the word of the Lord. Good afternoon, church. I had somewhat of a prelude for the Vida. But um, Karen, she did it well. Uh, <laughs> there's no else I can add to what she said for Dawn. So what I want you actually to do in a while is to just stand and we'll give her a round of applause until the Vida comes to sing. But the Vida is going to sing a song for us, Don't Cry. That's what I know Dawn would want us not to do. Don't Cry. She's gone on to a better place. She's looking down on us. And she's enjoying this right now. So please, just stand and give her a round of applause. That's Dawn.
you and I'll miss you. Rest in peace. I'm going to ask you to do something that may seem a bit odd and a little unusual. And I hope that you will bear with me for a moment because I think as we continue you will certainly understand why I've asked you to do this. I want you to take a moment and to sit in silence, absolute silence. Be present and open to the silence and just listen. But before you do that, I want to tell you something. Many believe that silence is the opposite of sound and that in silence there is absolutely nothing to hear. But I know that you know differently, and as a musician, a conductor, and even a music teacher, Dawn knew that silence was and is important. Every good musician knows that silence is the necessary space between the notes. That space that most of us call or experience emptiness and absence or void we are told is really the birthplace of music. It's called a rest, 
And that space, that silence, is much a part of the music as the notes are. That space, as the ECCB demonstrated to us today, demonstrates the rhythm. It holds the energy and gives much life and power and finesse and beauty to the music. Silence is never just emptiness or absence or void. In music, silence is life. Silence is not death. And on this day, silence certainly is not. So if you will, take a moment and just be present in the silence. Before you fall asleep, I must call you back to this place. My guess is, in that silence, you heard many things. We don't have time to let you share. But I suppose you might have heard the music of dawn. You might have heard the friendship. You might have heard her teaching, her presence the sound of the songs that she taught, how she touched your life and how she invited you to join in a greater song of life. Indeed, you must have heard holy music. I'm guessing you might have heard a song of grief, your own grief that is unrelated to why we are here today. I am guessing that you might have heard a voice or two and a note or two of sadness. And that space between those notes demonstrated to us the importance of the silence. In this silence, we learn that there is indeed a new song for dawn. We learn that there will be eventually a new song for all of us. Silence creates something new. And today, as we mourn dawn, remember her for all that she was, all that she is, for she will live with you and in you. You heard that? That should be a watchword. Every day, until I die, I represent the Most High. No, not just the songs, I've, I've picked up a, a few recent... You know Pussycat about me? No. What? What's that? Um, okay, yeah, you know that. It's okay.
I know that a lot of us, our church experience the be all and the end all. We love that song. We sing it at the end of every funeral when we all get to heaven. We're not going to heaven like that. God ain't want us up there. He put us down here to the work. <laughs> you know what happened? You're so lazy, you be that you ain't want to do no work. You just want dead and go heaven. The devil is a liar. You better do your work. All right. So guess what? I'm done. God bless you, each and every one. I want you to know this. The music of Dawn's life did not end at death. Today we stand in that space between the notes, a space that makes room for presence in a new way, a space from which God is making all things new. The music of Dawn's life now plays in a different key because life has changed, it has not ended. This is the same space that Jesus provides and tells us of in John chapter number 14. That death is not a conclusion to the song of life. He says, behold, I will go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Though we might be able to name the day and even the hour of dawn's death, that space didn't allow us to know the moment. She simply moved from this life to a new life. The music hasn't ended, just that the key has changed. And that means we must learn to listen in a new way. It means that she now listens in a new way. And we too must listen with our ears and our hearts. What is this silence teaching us? And so when we get to that part where we recognize that we must listen in silence, we must pay attention. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. For we continue to sing as dawn continues to sing in a new note. And we are singing the never-ending song of life. That is why we are gathered here today. And that is why on this day, even the grave will make our song. Dawn goes down justified to her house, singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
continues until the day that we hear the trumpet if we are alive and if we are not the word of God says those who fall asleep in Christ he will bring them with him until we meet again we sing the hallelujahs but if you know Jesus Christ you too will sing the hallelujahs if you do not know him you won't in the words of Don, Pastor, when it's all said and done, it's really only what's done for Christ will last. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that your word reminds us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We thank you for the life of this your servant who gave her best to your kingdom while she traversed this earth. And now that her earthly pilgrimage is over and her life on earth is done, we thank you for the blessed hope and the promise that you have given to all those who love you and look forward to your appearing. For those who remain, may we be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, for as much as we know our labor is not in vain in the Lord. To you we give glory, honor, praise, dominion, majesty, and might, who was and is and is to come, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we stand please? As we prepare for the internment of the body at the, at the Springfield Cemetery, we're going to sing a recessional song soon and very soon. We are going to see the king.
Sure. 